dominating message that kept going through my mind was that change is coming for Tibet. It is absolutely certain. We can see it in China. We can see it in the world. And most importantly, we can see it in Tibet. The proof that change is coming. Right now in Beijing, the Chinese leadership is meeting. They are there to, in part, rubber stamp Xi Jinping as the new president of China. He's already taken on the role as the head of the Chinese Communist Party. Now they will officially announce on Friday he is the new president of China. But if you look at what is happening in China today, if you look at even the words of the outgoing premier, Wen Jiabao, listen to what they're saying. Against all of their desires, against all of their will to hold on to power, even they know that it's coming to an end. They know change is on the horizon. The economic growth in China is spectacular. We all know that. We have to hear it every bloody day. On the radio, on the television, on the covers of the news magazines, on the covers of the newspapers. But now what we're hearing more and more, and I know you have heard it too, we hear about the corruption, we hear about the social unrest, the, the environmental destruction, the forces in China that are getting too strong for even the Chinese Communist Party to control. No amount of force, no amount of lies, no amount of deceit can stop the change, the tide that is turning, the change that is coming inside China. And so the Chinese Premier, Wen Jiabao, said in his speech at the opening of the National People's Congress in Beijing just this past week, he said, there are great challenges and we have to adjust. He said, the economic growth has had a major social and political cost and we have to change things. Otherwise, we are finished. He knows, he can see. The Chinese leadership can see what's on the horizon. Even the way that they deal with Tibet right now, after all of these decades, they have used everything to try to break the Tibetan spirit. They have tried to destroy our culture. They have tried to smash our monasteries. They have tried to imprison into the darkest corners every one of our people in such a way that we will just give up, that we will roll over, that we will die. But instead, what do we see today inside Tibet? We see Tibetans rising up. We see a new generation rising up. Tibetans who have never known anything but a life under occupation and, a, and with no freedom, with no free speech, with no free assembly, with none of the things that we're doing here today. A new generation of Tibetans is completely committed to change and fighting for their rights at any cost. They still remain nonviolent. They may even give their bodies in this fire sacrifice but they're not lashing out. They are not going after the Chinese military. They're not going after the Chinese police. They're not even attacking the Chinese settlers. But they are demonstrating the commitment with the sacrifice of their own lives. And we may not want to see it. It may make us sad. It may make us depressed. But it is a sign, after all of these long decades, that change is coming. And if you look in the world today, and if you see how people talk about China, and if you see how some of our governments are actually starting to look at the Tibetan issue, if you see that on Friday in Washington, D.C., the new Secretary of State, John Kerry, presented a war and won an award to one of Tibet's greatest heroes, a writer named Siring Wuse. She lives in Beijing. He presented to her in absentia one of the International Women of Courage Awards at the State Department. He said in his speech, in his introduction of Wuse, he didn't just call her a woman of courage, he talked about the fact that she is giving voice through her writings, through her blog, Invisible Tibet, which she writes from Beijing itself. He 
He talked about how she is giving voice to the voiceless, how Tibetans are suffering, how the Chinese government is trying to stop the flow of information from Tibet, and this woman is trying to get it out, and she's risking everything, and she's not allowing fear to stop her. He used very strong language, actually, to talk about one of our Tibetan patriots, one of our Tibetan heroes. This is not a coincidence. The Secretary of State, those speeches are very well prepared. And all of the policy people and all of the people in the US government that look at such a speech, they don't allow strong words to be used unless there are strong words that are being felt are appropriate at the highest levels. This is where we are. I'm not trying to say that we're on the edge of some kind of global uprising to support some you know, massive change and push into Tibet. But these are the signs that change is coming. That even the international position on Tibet as a part of China can change. And this is where the, I'll, I'll finish here. What it all comes down to is us. What it all comes down to is Tibetans inside Tibet. That we never give up, that we never stop fighting, that a new generation continues to move into the streets. That as our elders pass away, the little ones take up the cause and take up the flag. And that we never, ever give up until we see the day when there is freedom in Tibet, whether that takes one year, five years, 20 years, 50 years, change is coming and we will never stop fighting. That is what this day is about. Mm-mm.